Welcome to Asian Light Gallery. Indo-UAE relations are reaching its peak in the last few years. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's historic visit to the UAE in 2015 August and Abu Dhabi Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed Al Nahyan's visit to India as the chief guest of our Republic Day opened a new era in Indo-UAE relationships. India will be honored at the forthcoming World Government Summit which is going to take place in Dubai in February 2018. Asian Light is going to meet Indian Ambassador to UAE, Mr. Navdev Singh Suri, to get more details about India's role in UAE's development and UAE's role in India's development. Thank you. You're just back from Kerala. How was the trip to Kerala? Well, I had the pleasure of accompanying uh, His Highness um, Sheikh Dr. Sultan uh, Al Qasimi, uh, ruler of Sharjah and a member of the uh, Supreme Executive Council to uh, Kerala. He was there uh, officially for three days and um, it was a very useful interaction both between uh, the uh, delegation from Sharjah and the Chief Minister and his team from Kerala, but also because uh, uh, Dr. Sultan uh, uh, gave an amazing lecture on uh, his scholarship of uh, the historical links between uh, the Gulf uh, states and uh, particularly the Malabar coast uh, in India. He has done his PhD on uh, that subject and particularly his knowledge about uh, um, history since the Portuguese uh, times. Is, is quite uh, impressive uh, and in recognition of his tremendous scholarship he was also given an honorary doctorate by the University of Calicut in a very uh, elegant uh, program at the Raj Bhavan in uh, Trivandrum. So all in all very good visit and particularly a very good outcome because he announced that he would um, uh, release 149 Indian uh, prisoners who had been in Sharjah jails for various minor offenses uh, and not only agreed to uh, release them, but in a very magnanimous gesture, he uh, also said that he would either pay their fines and uh, debts or uh, would waive them. Excellent. What is the significance of Sheikh Sultan's uh, trip to Kerala? How the Kerala is treated you? Are you happy with the way they welcome Sheikh Sultan and you and then Fred? Look, uh, the visit was primarily Dr. Sheikh Sultan's. Um, I was there as India's representative uh, at that uh, occasion. Okay. So I think the spotlight uh, was very much on His Highness as it should have been and not on the ambassador. Did you learn any Malayalam? Not really. Uh, I think uh, most of the conversations were uh, in English uh, and uh, there was limited opportunity to learn Malayalam. Thank you, sir. There are more high-level visits are on pipeline. Now, uh, the World Government Summit has announced India will be the guest of honor in the next year's summit. So, what's your take on this uh, WSG's decision? Well, let's take it in two levels. Uh, one, uh, yes, there are a number of high-level uh, visits and high-level uh, uh, programs which are in the pipeline. We are expecting uh, the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu, here uh, in Abu Dhabi later this month. We are uh, also organizing a major uh, business event called the India-UAE Partnership Summit towards the end of this month. We have the India-UAE Strategic Dialogue on October 29, for which uh, our Minister of State, Mr. M.J. Akbar, is uh, coming. That's just in October. Uh, we have a very strong delegation, almost 83 persons coming from India for the World Skills uh, Summit that begins here uh, in about 10 days' uh, time. Uh, and in November, again, we have a, a range of different um, high-level level activities, including the uh, meeting of the high-level task force on investment, for which we are expecting uh, Mr. Suresh Prabhu, the Minister for Commerce and Industry, to come. So that would give you an idea that on the bilateral front, it's a very, very uh, busy agenda that we have. And that sort of leads up to the World Government Summit, 
I think the importance of the World Government Summit lies in the fact that it is the flagship uh, event organized by the government of UAE and particularly the uh, His Highness, the ruler of Dubai. Uh, it is perhaps the world's only event that is focused specifically on governance issues. Now, Prime Minister Modi has uh, invested immense uh, uh, energy in championing the use of technology in governance. Uh, when we look at the Jandhan, Aadhaar, mobile uh, platforms, uh, the, really the effort is to see how you can use cutting edge technology, how you can use mobile apps uh, to cut down on corruption, to bring in transparency and to uh, 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 deliver socioeconomic benefits to the last mile. And uh, this event, the World Government Summit in February, will give us the opportunity as the guest of honor country to showcase the vast strides that India is making in this area. And because the World Government Summit features the participation of almost 150 countries from around the world, it features the presence of the heads of World Bank and IMF and OECD and, and so on. It's also an opportunity for us, us not only to showcase our technology, but share our technology with other countries. So for me, uh, the fact that we will have this high profile participation at World Government Summit uh, is really an important development. Prime Minister Modi has announced several projects like Make in India, Skills India, and how UAE is supporting India to become a global power? Well, um, uh, certainly these are an integral part of our dialogue with the government of UAE. As I said, uh, in 10 days time, uh, on, uh, from October 13 to 16, we are getting a very large delegation for the World Skills Summit. Uh, we have uh, UAE companies investing in India. We have UAE companies uh, that are actively engaged. And I, I, I'm sure you're aware that UAE okay. Uh, is India's third largest trading partner when we look at non-oil trade. And India is UAE's largest trading partner. Our annual non-oil trade last year was to the tune of $52 billion. And our exports to UAE were to the tune of $32 billion. So it's a very large economic relationship between our countries. You played a key role in uh, formulating India in Destination India uh, during early 90s. Now, after 25 years, uh, what's your take on uh, India now as uh, the best destination for investment? Well, you know, when we did our first ever investment promotion uh, seminar in uh, Singapore back in October 1991, soon after the first dose of economic reforms was announced, I can tell you that we used to be greeted with a lot of skepticism. Uh, the Indian story was not known at that time and we had to knock doors and break doors down to get access. Uh, today, the doors are open for us. Uh, today, uh, because of the rapid economic growth of India, because of the reforms uh, initiated by Prime Minister Modi, because of the credibility that he has built for India in, in so many countries, uh, we find that today it's a much easier uh, task to promote India as an investment destination. And in a sense, the results are there to see that India is one of the top um, uh, magnets today to attract uh, FDI. Thank you, sir. Where do you want to see India by 2025? You know, the Prime Minister has given us a really uh, interesting vision for a new India. And I don't want to add anything to that, except to say that all of us wish that we see an India which is free of poverty, which is free of disease. We see an India that respects cleanliness. We see an India that respects diversity. Uh, that uh, shuns casteism and communalism uh, and that uh, shines as a beacon for other countries to follow. India is targeting uh, 13 million tourists by 2020. So what's the role you are playing to promote India in the UAE? Well, we have a tourism office in Dubai and we work closely with them. Uh, we recognize that the market from UAE is quite different from the market in some of the other countries. Here, you've got a very high-end market. And so what we're trying to do is really um, reach out to key constituencies with some of the top-end packages, whether it's the Maharaja uh, Express or the Palace, Palace on Wheels or, or, or some of our um, high-end resorts and spas and so on. Uh, that's the kind of market that uh, is uh, uh, liked here in UAE. And it is certainly part of our effort to see how 
we can get more people from the Emirates to visit some of those really uh, exciting locations in India. UAE, especially Dubai, Dubai is gearing up for Expo 2020. What will be India's participation in Expo 2020? We've already uh, announced that we will uh, participate and uh, uh, we are currently engaged in uh, substantive discussions with the Expo 2020 team uh, to identify a suitable uh, plot where we will have the India Pavilion. The uh, Department of Commerce from the Indian side has been designated as the nodal uh, authority to uh, coordinate Indian participation and the Federation of Indian Export Organizations has been assigned the task of uh, bringing together Indian companies that will showcase some of our strengths in Expo 2020. Thank you, sir. And one more thing, UAE is going to celebrate 2018 as the uh, legacy, Zaid legacy year. Uh, how we are going to participate in the celebrations? You know, um, we work very closely uh, with uh, uh, the Indian community here in UAE to uh, certainly uh, put together ideas uh, for the year of giving and for remembering the legacy of uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Zayed. Um, we have some really interesting archival material which uh, uh, speaks about his visits to India and his own passion for India and how he saw the relationship between a newly independent UAE and uh, India with whom they had traditionally enjoyed uh, very, very close ties. So we will be trying to build upon that legacy as we go forward. Over 2.3 million Indians are living in the UAE. And uh, what's your uh, comment on the thriving Indian community in the UAE? Well, uh, I wouldn't look at the uh, Indian community in UAE as a monolith of 2.3 or actually proper, probably 2.7 million. Uh, I would look at them in uh, three or four different categories. Uh, at one end, maybe about 70% of the Indian community is broadly what you would call blue collar. And uh, it, it's very important for us to make sure that we look after them. And frankly, a lot of our time uh, goes to making sure that their requirements are understood. When they are in distress, we are able to assist them. Um, we uh, should have systems in place when they need legal assistance or medical assistance. If somebody falls ill, we have even systems in place to repatriate them back to India. If they lose a job, um, we, we give them some subsistence allowance. So we have an Indian Community Welfare Fund that really is used effectively to assist those Indians who are in distress, particularly at the, at the lower end of the uh, income spectrum. Then we have a vast number of Indian professionals. And today you see in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, in Sharjah and elsewhere that uh, whether it is the financial sector, whether it's the real estate sector, whether it's the other services industries, you see Indians at topmost positions. And that's an extremely important resource. Uh, they are like a brain bank for India overseas. And we work very closely with them. Some of them have excellent ideas. They have expertise for uh, India's development path. And the third category is what you would call uh, at the top end, the very entrepreneurial business community. And there are conversations with them are really to see how we can work closely with them to uh, increase investments into India. And I'm very pleased to say that some of the business leaders from Abu Dhabi and Dubai have in fact invested very significantly over the last few years, whether you look at healthcare, you look at hospitality, you look at retail, you look at even some cases of manufacturing. So we work with the Indian business community to encourage their investments into India. Thank you, sir. And the last question. There are many younger generation, they want to come to UAE and there is a strong Indian youth are living in the UAE. So what's your advice to the, the new generation of Indians in the UAE and back in India? Well, my advice to the young Indians here is you have the responsibility of being true to both countries, to uh, the country that you made your home and the country which is the motherland of you and your parents. Uh, and, and stay connected with India. We know that increasingly uh, in a global world, the globalized world, the whole uh, planet is your opportunity. But maintain those ties with India because they are very special to us. 
and certainly we from the embassy are committed to doing everything possible to nurture that vital relationship with India. As far as people in India are concerned, I would say that uh, UAE over the last uh, few years has really emerged as one of our closest partners uh, in the region. When uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed visited India in January as the chief guest on our Republic Day, it really has given a remarkable momentum to the relationship. Today, we have conversations in areas like defense and security and uh, uh, trade and investment and energy uh, uh, and uh, strategic petroleum reserves and so on that were perhaps unthinkable even a couple of years back. So we are at the cusp of an important uh, transformation in this uh, relationship. Make the most of it. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. I hope the new generation will listen to your words. Thanks, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Thank you.